we'll start with, um, actually, we might start with, uh, so for the vegan uh, version, actually, I'm just going to um, switch back to here because I'm talking for a little bit. So for the vegan version, the main thing that we're doing differently is um, instead of meat, we're going to be doing um, tofu. Instead of um, clarified butter or ghee, we're going to be doing uh, vegetable oil. So those are the two main swaps. And then, of course, if you were to have yogurt on the side, you could have almond yogurt, cashew nut yogurt. Those all go great instead of regular yogurt. And other than that, um, you know, the other thing is chicken stock that I'll be adding in. So you'd be doing vegetable stock instead. So uh, just a couple of swaps there. Uh, I'll show you very quickly just how to prepare the vegan um, tofu. So what would actually be happening is uh, you would be getting some firm tofu like so. And what I've done is I've already sliced these up. Um, and the reason I've sliced them up is because you don't want to be grating a big block of tofu. And I'll show you why in a second. Um, because we do want to get that mincemeat texture. We're not going to be able to get that if we have a big block of tofu that we're working with. So to start, I'm going to show you. We're going to use the cheese grater side of um, the tofu. Um, and instead of going, so I'm going to show you how it's going to be like if I did this long ways and downward. We're going to get very mozzarella cheese or tasty cheese, which we don't want because that's basically too big and we want like a minced version, so even more fine than that. Um, if I went sideways and did the same thing, you'll find that, again, still pretty big, not where, where it needs to be. So kind of still, hopefully you can see this, uh, quite big. We want to kind of get, again, like I said, to that mincemeat texture, which means we probably need to be doing something a little bit nuanced. So I'm going to show you what that is. So we're going to go between three great, three lines of grates and no further. And we're just going to kind of um, do it like we're grating ginger or lemon zest um, or anything like that. And I promise you, I won't finish grating this tofu because I'm not going to be cooking with it today. But what I want to show you is just the result of it. So just um, from having grated it very fine with that motion, you'll see here, hopefully, that we've got now some pretty, you know, mincy, mincy <laughs> looking tofu. And what I tend to do is I'll squish it up like so, even if it's not quite small yet. And if you do that with the rest of the tofu, about half a kilo worth, or I think that's um, half a pound, roughly, um, that should get you the consistency you need for the minced or the mock minced meat, I suppose, suppose um, instead of actually using meat, meat itself. So um, I will go forward uh, beyond that because I'm not going to cook with that. But if there was any questions about that, I will call out that you should not be using silken tofu or any kind of soft tofu because that's just going to fall apart and, and it, it just it structurally doesn't have the right consistency to have that meaty texture. One of the really good positives of, of cooking with tofu is that um, it's actually like a sponge for flavor. So it becomes really delicious. I made it a couple times and I was very pleased with the result. So if you do try this uh, with vegan, I'm keen to hear your thoughts and, and do share it again on social media. It will be great to, to hear from you guys on that. So that's the vegan versus, versus traditional options. Now we're going to quickly go through the speciality ingredients versus the um, substitute ingredients if you can't get the speciality ingredients. So really quickly, I'm going to just show you uh, the first one on that list um, is actually the red shallots. I might do that one first. So typically we know Spanish onions are red onions to be of this size. Um, hopefully you can see that. And that's there we go. <laughs> and that's a pretty big onion. And so we've all heard of French shallots. Um, in India, we have red shallots, which are kind of just a baby version. And it's kind of got the shallot structure on the inside in terms of how it grows. Um, they are far more powerful in terms of the flavor. You don't need to use a lot of them. And you'll see that I've halved the amount if you are using red onions versus this guy. Um, and the reason is, um, it is quite strong, and whereas Spanish onions tend to be probably a bit sweeter. So either or, doesn't matter. Um, just understanding it, uh, this one's going to be a little bit more pungent, this one a little bit sweeter. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. Uh, the other one is the chili. So hari mirchi, which is a green chili, uh, Indian, used in a lot of Indian cooking, is just a wee bit of a chili. Not a very big one compared to a cayenne pepper. So um, I would say the heat of this one equals to the heat of this one because these guys are quite, the green ones are quite powerful. Um, so if you're going to use this guy, um, I would cut the head off um, and I'd quarter it down 
uh, lengthways just to get to the smaller size. And you'll see that I start to do that with most of the other ingredients. We're trying to get it to a bite size so that everything kind of is the right, the, roughly the same size, whether it's the meat, the peas, the garlic, the ginger, the chilies. So again, it's about, if you cut the cayenne pepper the regular way, it's gonna be a little bit too big. So quarter it down lengthways and then chop it up and take the seeds out if you prefer. Um, it, it don't want it too spicy, but still want a little bit of heat. So that's the chilies for you right there. Um, the next, now we're gonna get into the, the, the whole spices. Um, so everyone knows what a bay leaf is and traditionally it's the laurel bay leaf. Um, and, and that's in California, I believe, have their own specific species of, of bay leaf, um, which I'm jealous of because I, I don't have access to it. But um, that is not the bay leaf we're going to be using today. And the reason I have it in front of you right now is because I want to show you the difference between the Indian bay leaf um, and the sort of regular bay leaf. So this here on my left, this guy is the Indian bay leaf. And you'll see very quickly that, actually, I'll do it this way. You can see the veins of the leaf kind of go from the tip where my thumb is all the way up to the top, whereas a bay leaf is more of a traditional looking leaf. Hopefully you can see the difference. Um, so that's how you'd be able to tell that this is an Indian bay leaf. They don't typically get sold in, in most grocery stores. You'd have to go to an Indian grocery store. And like the Brazil nut in Brazil, in Indian grocery stores, they just call it bay leaf. So <laughs> you'll have to pay attention to the veins to be able to establish the difference. So hopefully that helps you sort of be a little bit more discerning the next time you're in an Indian grocery store. But this is the one we're gonna be using today. Now, um, this is actually a leaf from a cinnamon tree. And that's why we uh, have cinnamon as a substitute. Uh, now, um, before I move on to, um, in case you can't find this leaf, I also want to just quickly show you what curry leaves are. And that's these guys here. They're fresh. And that's not what we're using today either. Curry leaves are great. I love them. They're quite astringent and lovely in curries, mostly used in South Indian cooking, whereas this particular dish is uh, more of a Mughal cuisine coming in from the north. So um, a little bit different there. Love this stuff, but just not, not using this stuff today. Now, if you don't have Indian bay leaf, you can certainly substitute it with cinnamon stick. So most of you would have seen this. This is Ceylon cinnamon. Um, I just want to call out that this leaf doesn't come from the same. So it is a cinnamon leaf tree or a cassia cinnamon leaf tree, but it doesn't come from the same Ceylon cinnamon. Um, now, Ceylon cinnamon is a lot stronger in terms of the cinnamon flavor. It's quite um, powerful, which is wonderful for uh, desserts and other sorts of um, uh, dishes that you'd like to make. Um, but typically in India, um, northern India, that is, when it comes to making savory foods, we use cinnamon bark, which is distinctly different. I'm just going to pick this up and show you. One is a really thick bark and it's uh, long and like a cinnamon, except that Ceylon cinnamon kind of swirls and curls a lot more in the middle. Um, this is the same type of cinnamon that's used in pho, uh, the Vietnamese um, uh, noodle soup, um, and, and other sorts of um, Asian sorts of cooking. Whereas the cinnamon, the Ceylon cinnamon that most of you know, um, a lot stronger is, is what you get. And so ground cinnamon would be this version of the cinnamon. And it's fine to use either. This is more of just me sharing a little bit about the difference. Um, this guy is stronger, so I'd half the quantity. So for example, if you would be using an inch of cinnamon bark or one bay leaf, which is what I'd recommend. If you don't have a bay leaf, you could use cinnamon bark. Um, so if you don't have either of those, those, I'd use a half an inch of regular cinnamon and you'd be set. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, I'm going to um, so now I'm going to quickly switch over to the remaining uh, whole spices before I go into the ground spices. So I'm going to go up here, um, and I'm going to show you first the ground spices. So we have, hopefully you can see them. They're four distinct colors. The one at the top is the red, which is Kash Kashmiri chili. Um, Kashmiri red chili powder is actually not so strong in terms of the heat, and so you'll notice that cayenne pepper. Um, I've put in there is I've halved it because some cayenne peppers can be quite strong, whereas Kashmiri red chili is more red than it is spicy. So it looks it's it looks stronger than it actually is. So a tablespoon of that and cayenne pepper wise, a half a tablespoon. Um, we've got uh, a, ta a teaspoon each of cumin powder and a, te a teaspoon here of coriander powder. Now. I'll get back to the other spice um, that I've suggested you use cumin seeds as a substitute if you don't have it. If you're using cumin seeds as that substitute, you can reduce the cumin powder or omit it altogether, only because some people may not necessarily like cumin and 
maybe don't want it overpowering their dish. So you're more than welcome to adjust it as you like. And same with coriander, I know, or, or cilantro, uh, for some of you that uh, more commonly use the word, the name cilantro instead of coriander. This is just a powdered version of the seeds. Very sweet, very fruity, uh, lovely. And some people, again, distinctly, don't, they don't like the distinct flavor, so you can omit it if you don't like it. And lastly, we have a little bit of turmeric, half a teaspoon. Um, lovely for the color again, but then also for that earthiness. And, it, and, and, and again, half a teaspoon because too much of it does tend to make things taste a bit bitter. So those are your ground spices. And frankly, that's the beginning of what a garam masala is. So garam masala is basically literally translated warming spice, oh, sorry, warming mix. And here it's a mix of spices. And so in Northern India, because it's colder, typically most of their foods will have a garam masala in it. And, you know, not notwithstanding adding a little bit of maybe pepper or mustard and fennel, um, you've, got, you've got yourself essentially a very basic uh, garam masala. So we're just doing that bottom up, a deconstructed version for ourselves today. Uh, coming back to the remaining spices, I'm just going to pop this guy into the pan so hopefully you can see him. So we're going to start with these two first. So that's the spice that I'm going to be using today. It's called kala elachi or black cardamom. Very different from a regular cardamom, which is these guys over here both in size and color. Um, they're both minty, but this guy's smoky. Um, so now um, the way I've substituted it is one of these equals to two of these. Um, but in terms of flavor, all this replaces is the mintiness. What it doesn't do is replace the smokiness. And so you'll see in the uh, substitute ingredient list, I've actually added to add smoked paprika because that smokiness will come through with the paprika if you use it. So not sweet paprika, specifically smoke, just to kind of be able to bring that flavor into the dish if you can't get a hold of these guys. So I'll be using two of these today. The other thing I'll be using, I'm just going to twist this guy around. Um, if, you are, if you can't get uh, caraway seeds, which is these guys, and I'm going to lift this up so you can see the difference hopefully, but this is caraway seeds and this is Cuban seeds. Can you see how close they look? <laughs> Sometimes the naked eye can't tell the difference. So caraway seeds is actually used a lot in German cooking. Um, sauerkraut uh, is where you'd use uh, to make it, um, I think even some, some forms of pretzel bread, and quite, and quite widely used in some other cuisines as well. Um, widely used in Persia, and again, through the Mughal cuisine, made its way to India, and that's what we'll be using today. Very different flavor to cumin seeds, look similar but different. Um, these guys, cumin seeds, far more powerful, stronger. So again, like I said before, if you're using the, this cumin seeds instead of the caraway seeds, maybe drop down the, the cumin powder in the ground mix. Um, but these are wonderful. They're different from cumin because they're not actually as spicy or strong. They're actually quite, um, they've got a pungency to it, but not so much in a, in a spicy kind of way, but in more of a um, um, floral kind of a way. So hopefully that comes through in the dish when we fry that up. Um, and not to be confused with black um, cumin. So some people call black cumin so black cumin is just a name, and I think it's been misused quite a lot. So some people call caraway seeds black cumin. Some people call nigella seeds black cumin. So specifically go shopping for caraway seeds if you want to try th this dish later on. Nigella seeds, completely different flavor. It's more like an onion seed. Um, wonderful to use, but not in this particular dish. What we're looking for is that guy or that guy as a substitute. So hopefully that answers all the questions. Oh, and just for, for fun, that's fennel seed. So these three seeds, um, yeah, you kind of need to make sure you know what you're looking at when you're when you're in the spice rack. Because sometimes you maybe if you don't have when I don't have my spectacles on, I tend to mix them up um, if you don't have a, a good sense of smell for it. So uh, with that, I'm just going to get the pan going, and we're going to switch over and kick into the cooking part of today's <laughs> class. But again, while the pan warms up, um, any questions from anyone else? that has come through. Um, ho hopefully, you know, raise your hand if you found that helpful um, at all. Um, you know, I, I've, I've seen some comments come through saying that that was great information, so I'm glad. Hopefully in the regular view. Um, so it's just a container. It's, it's, it's in almost every Indian kitchen and it's just got little bowls and a spoon. Typically, um, when we cook uh, Indian dishes, um, the, the flavors and, and spices are actually rooted in medicinal um, uh, uh, roots, going back to Ayurvedic um, uh, medicines and, and, and knowledge. So most Indian dishes will typically have the six tastes of Ayurveda. So that's um, you know the ones we know, salty, sweet, spicy, 
sorry, salty, sweet, sour, and bitter are the ones we know. And then um, astringent and pungent are the other two that maybe aren't so common in other cuisines. And so this guy just kind of has, you know, seven little uh, bowls that typically have six to seven of those flavors. Uh, so I won't get into it today. Maybe we can do a different class next time that kind of talks a little bit more about that and how you kind of mix and match them. Because spices used in North India are very different from spices used in South India because of weather and, and just kind of local uh, foods that are available in terms of the climate like for example, coconuts down south instead of um, dairy up north. And so the spice rack just kind of gives you those, those elements to play with. So I feel like making this, I'll put more turmeric, less of that, but typically they kind of get used up pretty quickly. So they can all just be put in one little box. It's just a spice box is what that one is. Um, your spices? Um, I typically still toast them like I will do now. I'm actually going to temper them specifically with the ghee that I'm going to pop in. So just while I answer that question, four tablespoons of ghee going in. Um, and so the reason I temper them is because like any spice, they all have oils in them. Anything from a, even a mint leaf has some amount of oil. That's where its flavor is stored. So heating up spices always helps, particularly if it, they've been in the pantry for a long time. Um, but keeping it in that box actually doesn't help in terms of, because all the spices will start to kind of mix together and this, the taste can kind of maybe, you know, adult trade each other. And so the reason you'd keep that in that box is if you're going to use it regularly. So I wouldn't get one of those unless I cook regular Indian types of, or at least use, um, do cook food that uses those spices a lot. Um, otherwise they do st tend to start to uh, get sort of a, a little bit of, um, what's the, I'm thinking of the Malay term to say this, but it'll absorb a lot of air. It'll interchange its flavors amongst each other. So if you if you don't cook typically a lot with uh, Indian stuff, I keep them in separate bottles um, just so that you don't sort of mix them up too much. Hopefully that, um, so I'm gonna switch cameras again. We've got this guy going. So I've got ghee in there. And, and ghee is one of those really wonderful, um, controversial spice, but a really wonderful one because it actually like honey never expires. Um, a little known fact. And so it's really good for you, um, obviously not in copious amounts. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to temper uh, some of the spices we mentioned before. So I'm going to get two of my um, uh, black cardamoms. I'm going to pop them in the mortar and pestle and I'm just going to open them up and put that in there. So there that goes. And that's just going to start tempering. The next thing that goes in there is my bay leaf. Sorry, the Indian bay leaf, which has magically disappeared. Now here it is. And that goes in. And the other thing that's going to go in is uh, the caraway seeds. So one teaspoon of them. So just a nice little amount, just scattered all over. And hopefully you can see that already warming up. So just a little bit of a saute. Um, ghee has a really high smoke point, so it's going to burn it pretty quickly if you don't either reduce the fire or keep an eye on it. So if you are cooking with ghee, be mindful of that. Um, if you're doing a vegan version, uh, canola oil and vegetable oil, not as high a smoke point, so uh, you should be okay. But yeah, just something to be mindful of. So those have gone in. And the next thing that's going to go in after this is the onions. So we're going to saute the onions for a couple of minutes before we add some of the other ingredients and then we should be able to get the meat in there. So pushing that to the side, there we go. You crushed the cardamom, right? Yes, I did, um, in, in a mortar and pestle. So I use this little guy, um, hopefully you can see that or that. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's a different one to, so it's an Indian one because when we use our spices and we use marble, they kind of, kind of get all mushed in there. So steel kind of keeps it clean. Um, so it's a steel version of it, but you can use any mortar and pestle you have. Um, it's funny, for, for Malaysian cooking, I have um, stone mortar and pestle. For uh, Indian cooking, I have a steel one. And for, um, you know, just more continental cooking, I have a marble one. So it's always fun to have a couple of different things at home. So the onions are going in next. I've just diced them up.
So we're going to let that sit for about a minute or two, just until it starts to soften and not before it starts to what we call caramelize. I'll add the garlic and chili in before it starts to do that. I'm just going to get a lid for the pot. I'll be right back. All right. It smells wonderful over here right now. The ghee just kind of really has that creaminess in its um, scent, which is quite lovely. Uh, so I'm getting ready to put the ginger and garlic in. What I'm going to quickly call out before I put it in is, hopefully you can see this, but I've actually chopped up the ginger into little itty bitty diced ginger bits. And again, like I mentioned earlier, it's more about the mouthfeel. So I don't want to have it sort of minced or um, kind of uh, grated because then it just kind of dissolves into the dish. Whereas this, if you like ginger and like biting into it, is a really lovely way to incorporate it into the dish. So again, mince it if you prefer, it all mixed in there and just want the flavor. If you want the texture of it, I chop it up. And again, similarly with the garlic, as you can see, a little little bits and bites of, you know, kind of when you go with the knife, just before you get to the point where you're overly mincing it up, that's where you stop and you'll get that result. So first things in is the ginger. So that's about a tablespoon worth of the, about an inch, which is roughly a tablespoon uh, of the ginger. I usually measure an inch of a ginger like that. So when you chop that up, it becomes roughly a tablespoon's worth. Um, so that's gone in. I'll put the garlic in last because it tends to burn. Next in goes the chili. So that's the green chilies that we saw before. And again, if you're putting cayenne chilies and again, your tolerance of spice isn't too great, maybe you can omit the cayenne pepper later on, but keep the smoked paprika if you don't use the black cardamoms just to get that smoky flavor. So mixing all of that in together. And then we get to the ginger. Sorry, the garlic, not the ginger, that already went in. <laughs> and there we go. So we're just going to leave that for a minute or two um, to properly cook because we don't want any dish when you put onions, ginger, or garlic. Uh, typically, if you don't cook it properly, uh, the dish will go rancid quicker just because it does need to be cooked down. And this is true of any Indian dish, you know, most of the Malaysian uh, recipes I have. Um, it, it, it does. It, it's better to not overcook it, but cook it properly. You will be able to smell the difference between raw and cooked ginger, onion, and garlic. And once you develop a sense for it, then you're, you're on your way. So there we go. So that's going to go in for another minute or so. And I'm just going to get my, um, I'm using turkey mince today. So that's him right there. Um, now, if you're using lamb, um, and I didn't call this out at the start, but you should probably marinate it in a couple tablespoons of, of yogurt. The reason for that is to just get rid of that gamey uh, smell that some people might be sensitive to when it comes to mutton or lamb. But if you're using chicken or turkey, as I'm doing, you don't really need to, to be using that. So you're all fine. So I think this is ready. So I'm just going to make some space in the middle for the turkey to go in. I'm just going to let that cook down. And so because it's a mince, we're going to probably need to separate it, get a nice little bicep workout while you're at it. <laughs> now, one of the ingredients that I haven't put into this dish that I've seen others add is tomatoes. Um, and that's probably because, actually, give me a second to just get this going and then <laughs> I'm going to cover it up for just a minute so I can chat about that. I do not want to compete with that. So <laughs> you can add tomatoes in, totally fine. What it'll do, though, is it'll add a little bit of water because tomatoes tend to be quite juicy. So I'm about to put some chicken stock in after I add the ground spices. I would just reduce the chicken stock if you choose to add tomatoes, if you like tomatoes. The other thing I'd avoid doing is adding a lemon at the end because, again, tomatoes bring that acidity. And if you've already got it in there, then you probably don't need the lemon and yogurt, whichever yogurt you end up using will probably add that tanginess as well. So you'll be covered from, from that perspective. So I'm going to get um, my chicken stock ready and I'm going to get my ground spices ready. So what I'm going to do first is put the ground spices in. What I like to do is coat the ground spices all around the chicken because it just kind of gives the chicken and all the other ingredients in there an opportunity to just kind of have the spices cling on to them. 
before we kind of bring the chicken stock in to kind of make it a little bit more um, consistent throughout the dish. And um, I find that just kind of intensifies the flavor a little bit. So in that goes. And I'm going to stir that up. You know, it's smelling like lunchtime, even though it's 10.30 in the morning, 10.15 in the morning over here, but I'm not complaining. This is, this is a lot of fun. So just kind of going back at those itty bitty chunks of meat, just breaking it down. Now, if you were cooking this with tofu, the vegan option, it's not gonna take very long for your tofu to cook, um, but what you want to do is give it enough of an opportunity to mix in. So where I closed it before to give the turkey a chance to simmer a little, you wouldn't probably need to do that. You could go straight in with the spices, stir it up and add the vegetable stock, then cover it. Because uh, tofu doesn't need a lot of cooking, but it does need a lot of time to, well, not a lot, but a little bit of time for the spices to get into the, the tofu. Um, and then you'd have to keep an eye on it because it'll be easy to overcook it, which is fine if you like some caramelized, burnt, um, like intentionally burnt sort of bits of tofu, which can add a nice texture to the dish as well. But if you, you're not a fan of anything um, burnt or, or just kind of browned, um, you can kind of not cook it for too long. So hopefully you can start to see some of those colors come through. That beautiful yellow is really just the turmeric and some of that background red is the uh, cashmere uh, chili powder. So what I'm gonna do now is just add in the chicken stock. And I'm gonna do a cup's worth. There's my cup. And if you were doing it with lamb and you wanted to do beef stock, go for it. Um, that's good too. It's just gonna add that umami flavor to it. And then we're gonna cover the lid up for a couple minutes uh, to let that simmer up to 10 minutes if we think the meat's not done. Uh, but on a, on a low, relatively medium to low, medium to high heat, just so we want to, just so we make sure the chicken or in this case, turkey cooks through. Um, but before I put that lid on, I'm just gonna break up the little bits of turkey. <laughs> Get my workout in for the day. And then we be able to let that sit for a minute before we come back to it. So pretty simple dish. Um, and the same dish with the same spices, instead of cooking it, if you decided that maybe you wanted to just do it kind of like a kebab style. I, I, I'd use the same recipe, um, minus sort of the onions. I'd, I'd probably blend the onions and remove the water from the onions, kind of sieve out the water. Um, and yeah, you'd be able to just throw that in with the spices and the meat and you can make kebabs with it. So it's the same fundamental um, base recipe that then gets turned into a variety of different dishes. All right, we're gonna leave that to sit for a couple of minutes probably five. I'll get the timer going to keep me honest. But yeah, that's that for now in terms of the, the cooking side of things. We're almost at the end. Um, and then we'll be able to plate it up and give it a taste. So maybe we switch back to, that was the chicken stock. <laughs> maybe we switch back to this view and I'm just gonna check in to see how things are going with everyone else. The minutes is up. Wow. Yeah. So. I'm just gonna lift the lid off. Hopefully you guys can see that. And what I'm gonna do is I like this dish dry. Um, so I'm gonna let that water come off. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so as you can see, this is cooked down quite a bit. Um, what you'll start to see, uh, because I added the, the red chili powder, um, and, and, and so in one of the other dishes that we discussed, uh, Brianna and Julia, is Rogan Josh. So Rogan is basically red oil, and typically is made with either oil or ghee that's mixed in with that red Kashmiri chili powder. And so what we have here, don't mind me wiping that lens, is just a little bit of that uh, um, starting to show a reminiscent of what a Rogan Josh would look like, though I haven't added nearly as much Kashmiri red chili powder. Um, and also Rogan Josh typically doesn't use, um, traditionally doesn't use chili powder. It uses something called alkanet root, which is very, very red um, to get the redness from it. So here we have a resemblance of it. You can see along the corners, just starting to form, but I'm gonna get that water to come, all, uh, come on up. So I'm gonna, yep, on a high heat to get all that water evaporated because I like it dry. But if you 
like it uh, semi um, wet in terms of the, the final dish. And especially if you're using tomatoes, because there will be some amount of, um, of, of uh, water come out through the fruit, you know, you're more than welcome to stop cooking it at that point if you like that um, water to come through. Uh, so yeah, so long as the meat's cooked, because we want to make sure the meat's cooked. That's the main thing. And we'll also just quickly do um, a salt. Uh, I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. Because uh, I don't think we're going to need a lot more than that, just because the chicken stock is going to have some of the uh, the savory touch to it already, and also the uh, ghee has that lovely creaminess in it that's going to give us all that yummy um, intensity. So we don't really need a lot of salt, particularly if you're trying to be careful with salt. Um, and yeah, I think this dish is done almost. I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes and keep the lid off. And yeah, yeah, almost there. And right on time too for a change. The last class went a little bit over because it was a bit more of a longer dish to make. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna let that sizzle up and then we're good to go. And I'll, I'll do a bit of plating um, and show you something fun that I also can eat it with that um, some of you may not have seen before. But these spices, it's winter here. So it's a lovely dish to have in winter. It's just all really quite, comforting. It is, it, and it is one of those sort of versatile foods, as I mentioned before, you can have it almost with anything. And it does bring that element of comfort just because of the warming spices, the ease with which to eat it. It's just lovely. Um, the only thing that needs to go in now um, before we finish up is the, the peas, which I've thawed. So that's about a cup or 135 grams, which is a quarter of a pound, um, I think, <laughs> hopefully. I'm just going to throw those in now. Um, just to find, finally bring that all together. And doesn't that look lovely? The green just kind of brightens it up too, doesn't it? Same goes for cinnamon stick for that matter. Some people don't like biting into that either. So I pull that out if you're using that. Um, some people don't have a problem with it. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. I think we're ready. It's still got a little bit of, um, just a little bit of uh, sauce around the corners, but I think that'll come up um, with the, heat that's left in the pan. And I'm just going to quickly plate um, the dish so we can, I'll show you how it's, I suppose, plated, <laughs> eaten. Um, I will take a quick taste of it just to make sure it tastes okay and if it needs any sugar or salt um, before I take it out. Mm. Perfect. Ooh, and that heat sort of, sort of sits in the back of of the throat. So immediately um, there's the, this creaminess from the ghee. Um, there's the chewiness of the turkey. And then there's the sort of the pop of the, um, the mutter, the, the green peas. And then in the back, just as you sort of send it, send it down, you get the heat just kind of covering the back of your throat. And not in an overpowering way, just in a really sort of calming, comforting sort of a way. So that's lovely. Um, now I'm gonna plate this up. And here we go. So I've got my lemon wedge. Actually, how do I do this? Maybe I do it. Um, see, I'm going to switch over from that to here. So I've got my little lemon wedge. Um, I'm just going to take it out. You may not see this, but I'm just going to pop him in here. And then maybe switch back to the other camera because that might be ideal. Actually, what I could do is have a bit of, so you can see that, move you. To, so there we go, that's how you can see it. So that's the keema, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Um, how I would eat it is with some lemon juice um, and some yogurt. So I would just add a dollop of it on the side, like so. So you can kind of mix it in as you eat it, so it's not fully incorporated. You would take your lemon wedge and you would squeeze it on top and it's ready to go. I would have it, um, I especially love having it with this guy. So he's, um, I guess it's called papadum, but it's actually got caraway seeds in there, if you can see them, um, little itty bitty bits of them. And I've just sort of, I've, I've, I've done the shortcut version of this. I've taken um, what is typically a raw version of this so a regular version of this before it's cooked looks like this. 
Um, and it's just flat, um, I think, and I'll actually defer to mom, maybe she'll keep me honest, but it's made with um, uh, basin, which I think is... Um, lentil flour. It's lentil flour, yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. basin is, I think, specifically chickpea flour, but it's flattened out and dried. So it's almost like, um, um, trying to think of an equivalency to it, but it's got uh, caraway seeds in there. What you do is you throw, you can either fry it or you can, what I do is spray oil in it and put it in the microwave and just nuke it for a couple of minutes and it comes out beautifully. And so hopefully you can hear this. It's really crunchy. And so it goes really well in terms of the texture to eat it with, with this dish. So again, rice, salad, roll it up as a burrito, um, a burrito um, to, to eat, Tacos. you can have it with flatbread. Say that again, Mom? Yeah, you can put in tacos also. Tacos, yeah, tacos. there you go. That's tacos. it. Like hard, hard or soft shell tacos. Um, but yeah, all of that wonderful stuff for you to, to try and have it with. But yeah, there we go. That's your kima mushroom masala with a side, side of papadam. And yeah, have it any way you like. That's the beauty of this dish. It's very versatile. And we're done. <laughs> mm -hmm.